It was on this day one year ago that Hamas launched a brutal assault that resulted in the deaths of approximately 1,200 Israelis and the horrific capture of hundreds more. What followed was a massive Israeli military response that has claimed over 41,000 Palestinian lives, the displacement of millions in Gaza and Lebanon, an ongoing humanitarian crisis and a region still in the grip of soaring tensions and divide. Immediately after the attack at a music festival and kibbutz near the country's border with Gaza, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu declared the country is at war with Hamas. Within a month, the embattled Netanyahu, who is struggling for his own political survival, assembled an emergency war cabinet and launched a ground invasion of Gaza. It didn't take long for Iran's proxies in the region to act. The Houthis started carrying out attacks in the Red Sea, causing diversions in a major shipping route that has resulted in a 90% drop in container traffic. In November, Israel and Hamas agreed to a temporary truce that allowed for the exchange of women and children held in Gaza in exchange for Palestinian women and children held in Israeli jails. It's believed about 100 are still being held hostage. Countless rounds of shuttle diplomacy and ceasefire talks since have been in vain as new fronts opened up in the war, particularly against Iran's most powerful proxy, Hezbollah, in the north. Israel's attack on an Iranian embassy compound in Damascus that took out a top Iranian general earlier this year resulted in Tehran firing missiles directly on Israel, mostly intercepted by the Iron Dome. That was just a precursor to the events of the last month that culminated in Israel's killing of top Hezbollah commander Hassan Nasrallah, followed by an ongoing invasion and ground operation inside Lebanon. Iran responded last week with its biggest barrage of missile strikes against Israel, again mostly intercepted, but still raising the stakes. This is not an exhaustive timeline, nor does it begin to capture the immense suffering experienced in the last year by this tragic cycle of violence in the region. What it does do is underscore the urgent need for reconciliation and a lasting peace that recognises the humanity of all involved and the losses endured by both Israelis and Palestinians who, after generations of conflict, remain caught in an ongoing struggle for safety and dignity.